Today, I'm going to show you how to create the frosted glass effect inside of Motion. Alright, to get started, we create a project. Your dimensions and stuff doesn't matter. I'm going with 1080, 24 frames per second. The first thing I like to do is select the canvas right here and hit Shift C, which will fit it to the window. Now, a good practice to do is save your project before you begin so you don't lose anything. Copying your media to a folder is a good idea if you're pulling any media that's not created inside of Motion. So step one, we need to bring some footage into our project. I have some that I shot here. And I like to rename the group that I have this in as background, just to keep it organized. Now, this footage can actually be just a drop zone, but I'm gonna leave it as footage because actually inside the inspector, you could create it into a drop zone and you could publish that later if you needed to. So the next step is to clone our original footage. It's important to not just duplicate, but actually make a clone. This way, if you change the original media, it'll change it later on, which we'll see. So what we're going to do next is add some effects to our clone layer of the footage. So we're going to add a Gaussian blur to it, and that's going to give us the, well, blurry look to it. So go into the inspector, and I'm going to increase the amount to around 64. So one problem that you may have here, when you add a blur, some of the very far edges may be transparent. So Sometimes what I do, if it's going to make a difference in my project, is I will zoom in on my clone layer to 101%. And I'm not worried about losing quality since this is got a heavy blur on it. So next, I like to create a new group. And I'm going to call it Glass Pane. This is where I'm going to add this shape that's going to appear to be the glass pane in front of the footage. So for this, I'm just going to create a, a bar straight across. One tip is after you create the shape, to make sure it's dead center, you can select your object, go into the properties, and just hit the reset button here. Now we know it's dead center. So here's the trick now. Select our clone footage, go into object, and we're going to create an image mask. So click the add image mask. And for the source well, we're going to drag this shape that we just created. Now, as you can see, it's now just our original shape is the clone layer, but it's blurred. Now, this doesn't really look like a glass pane in front of it, but we'll get to that point. So to make it look more like a piece of glass in front, we're going to select the clone layer, go to our properties, and add a drop shadow so it will give some dimension. It'll look as if it's in front of the other footage. Now, this is all your preference. I'm going to go 49 for the blur and add a distance of about 63. So as you can see, it's starting to look more like a glass pane in front of footage. To kind of further this illusion, we're going to create more of a colored glass in front of it. So what we're going to do is duplicate our original shape that we created earlier. I'm going to rename this now to mask shape since that's what it is. To duplicate it, you could press Command D, and then let's rename this to Shape Color. I'm going to change the color to white, but the key is to bring the fill opacity down. And as you can see, it kind of gives the illusion of it being a frosted white glass in front of our footage. So one thing I didn't mention in the original recording of this is the reason why we can't just turn on our mask shape layer to use it as the white frosted layer on top and we're actually duplicating it is because doing so, if we reduce the fill opacity, is also going to reduce the fill opacity of our mask. So our footage as the shape object becomes more and more transparent, so does our blur effect. And so once you get down to zero, we no longer have a blur in front of our footage. So now we have two shapes that make up our glass pane. And we have a problem with, if you move either one of these, the illusion is going to be broken. So a fix for this, 
we're going to add a behavior to one of these shapes. So if we go to behaviors and go to motion tracking and select match move. Then select the other shape and move it into the source well. And in here you have the potential if you're wanting it to match the moves for position, scale, and rotation. I'm just going to leave it for position and rotation. But as you can see, now when I move either one, well, the one shape, it's going to move the other one with it, maintaining our illusion. Now for the next step, I'm just going to create a new group to add my words on top of the glass pane. So I'm going to go with a fictional company called Blue House Rafting. Make it center aligned. And let's make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. So if we go to the properties, we can drag it down so that it's more centered. And as you can see, we now you can see our footage looks like we have a pane of glass in front of it. So since we used the clone layer before and not just duplicated our original footage, we can actually drop other footage on and it's going to replicate the changes across. So our rafting company isn't doing so good, so let's change it now to Blue House Hiking Tours. And I'm going to have to scale that down a little bit to make it fit. You can actually change the color of the glass pane. You don't have to use white. Uh, you can use blue or whatever. Uh, it's all up to you though. Um, I tend to use white and sometimes black, which gives a tinted effect, but that's it. I hope this helps you out. Thank you.